Welcome to part four of the course, which is about the transport layer. In this particular video, I will introduce you to the functionality of the transport layer. So the purpose of this part of the course is for you to understand uh, TCP and UDP basics. And for TCP, this includes the connection setup, the handshake, connection teardown, and how data are sent and acknowledged during the transmission. For both TCP and UDP, it also includes knowing about the content of the header and what it is all used for. We will also speak about advantages and disadvantages of using connection-oriented and connection-less protocols. And you will learn about methods for handling um, congestion, especially TCP slow start and what is called random early detection. Moreover, you will learn about basic addressing uh, and the use of protocol numbers in the internet. So the purpose of this particular video is for you to understand the basic functionality of the transport layer. And if we again we look in the OSI model and the TCP IP protocol stack, we can see that the transport layer is usually referred to as layer number four. So it is between the network layer and the application layer in TCP IP. So this is where we have our interfaces. Um, what I want to say now is really it's important to understand this concept of, have, of having packets inside the packets. So if we assume that we are using uh, IP and TCP, what we can see is that, uh, and we, that we are running this through, for example, Ethernet, is that if we look at the Ethernet frame, then we know that the Ethernet frame is at least uh, 64 bytes because we have this minimum frame length in Ethernet. And then of these, we would have 18 bytes, which would be the frame header. We would have 20 bytes, which would be the IP header. And then we would have 20 bytes, which would be the, the header of the transport layer. So in, in case of TCP, if we are using UDP, the header of the transport layer is only eight bytes. But so what you see here is basically that we have a frame inside this frame we have the IP packet, and inside this IP packet, then we have the TCP packet or the UDP packet. Uh, so just to repeat it again, the header length here would be 18 bytes for Ethernet, 20 bytes for IP, and 20 bytes for TCP. And if you're using UDP, it would be 8 bytes instead of 20 bytes. Uh, and it's important to remember that for the frame, if we're using Ethernet, then the frame length would be at least 64 bytes. Okay, let's move on to the functionality of the transport layer. So the transport layer is end-to-end, -end, meaning that we have two entities and they just have to focus on the communication of each other. Uh, they don't care, uh, the transport layer doesn't really care about what is happening um, inside the network, or how many routers we are passing, which paths we are taking and so on. This is all left to the network layer. So the transport layer is end-to-end. It's based on port numbers, and it makes it possible to offer reliable uh, and maybe connection-oriented services even over an unreliable um, or connectionless network. And how does this work? Um, so usually in the transport layer, we go through different steps. If there is a connection, then we have a connection set up. We have to maintain the connection. We have to tear down the connection. We have to handle retransmission of lost packets. So if we detect that a packet is lost in the network layer, then the transport layer will offer the functionality to retransmit this packet. And then we also handle out-of-order packet arrivals, because in the network layer, it might be that the packets are arriving uh, out of order. So packet number, if we are sending packets in order one, two, three, they might arrive as packet two, one, three. And then the transport layer is keeping track of which packets are uh, sent uh, in, in what sequence and make sure that they are reordered before they are delivered to the application. The most used protocols, and I already mentioned it in the previous slide, uh, is TCP, which is transmission control protocol that is connection oriented and reliable. And then we have the UDP, the user data ground, data ground protocol, which is connection less uh, and, and less reliable, but sometimes used for for connections where you need it to be really fast or for shorter connections. Uh, so some warning here is that when we are talking about TCP, TCP is really a huge object. There are many tweaks and optimization possibilities. 
there are many PhD thesis which is written on uh, certain parts of TCP. So what I will go through in this course is the main principles behind it, and then you will have to look for additional details on how it is actually implemented. So some of the transport layer challenges that we need to work on is that there can be uh, possible delays from the network layer. And this also means that if we retransmit packets, there might exist multiple copies of the same data. So when I detect, so this is related to the next point really, that packet loss is difficult to detect. So when do we decide that a packet is lost and when is it just delayed? So we if we assume that we have one packet that experiences a very high delay, it might be that we decide it's probably lost and we retransmit it, but this also means that potentially we have two copies of the same packet in the network and we kind of need to take care to ensure uh, that nothing goes wrong there. Uh, also, it's often impossible to detect if a packet loss is due to congestion or if it is, a, you can say, a real packet loss, for example, because we are working on an unreliable wireless connection. So because of the poor connection, the packet arrives so, so damaged that we discard it. Uh, or it, it arrives in an intermediate point or it doesn't arrive at all uh, and is discarded there. So it can be hard to know if our packet loss is due to the bad uh, network link quality or if it is due to congestion somewhere. And that is a chance because the reactions would be quite different. So if we're talking about congestion, then we might want to lower our sending speed. And if we uh, just lost it along the way because of a bad link, then it's about retransmitting it as soon as possible. And we don't really have a, we often don't have a good way of knowing if it's one or the other. So that was a short introduction to the um, functionality of the transport layer. Uh, in the coming videos, we'll go in more details with the different parts. But for now, this is the end of the video. And if you have any questions, then please get in touch with me. Thanks for listening.